Good afternoon, or could be good morning, depending on when you view this Character Counts lesson. Before I begin, though, I really do need to thank Bruce Grove and his team at Queen Anne County TV. I am sure since March, all of you have experienced what is a very, very brave and challenging new world as far as learning is concerned. And for the most part, I'll bet you've risen to the challenge. Without Bruce Grove and his team, this lesson wouldn't be possible today. And I guess the essential question is, well, what is this lesson? Pretty much boils down to this. Think of me as a very, very small cog in a very big wheel. The wheel is made up of educators. The character counts coaches are part of that wheel. We have a message to try in our worst kind of way to get out to you, the students in Queen Anne County. And that is that your character, it's, it's the foundation of your life. It is the yardstick. It's the yardstick, tape, whatever, that you're measured by. And so, what I want to try to do today is to challenge you, get you thinking, and then eventually take you to a point where I'm going to share three stories with you, two of which are nonfiction, one of which is fiction. So let's begin with the pillar. So let us say you didn't know what the pillar of the month is. Well, generally speaking, yes, this is the ubiquitous, which means you used to see them everywhere, Volkswagen Beetle, four wheels, engine in the rear, in this case. It's a conveyance. It gets you from point A to point B. We call it the car, C-A-R. Believe it or not, at one time, there was something called the one room schoolhouse. Aha. Teacher would, what's that four letter word? Sounds like thing, sing, wing, ring. So if you combine C-A-R with R-I-N-G, Bogosh and Bagora, you have caring. And that's the pillar of the month. Pillars do not exist independently of one another. They are interdependent, interlocked. Again, they are the foundation of who you are, what you are, what you will become. One way to show you care. These have become very much a part of our everyday lives. The yardstick of six feet or more. The mats, the lotion. That's one way to show you care. Care about yourself, care about your family, care about others. It's very basic. P believe it or not, it's essential to life and health and well-being of you, your community. Wouldn't it be nice? I used the word uh, ubiquitous. I had to look that up when I was in high school because I had no more idea than a man in the moon what it meant. But it means everywhere, all the time. Wouldn't it be nice if we walked out into a situation where masks were required and everybody wore them? Well, that's the difference between being a leader and a follower. You see, here's the thing about leaders. Leaders will do things when they are the right things to do, when others won't, don't, or can't. Why? Because leaders know that the right thing may not be the popular thing, but the right thing is what 
is to be done. Regardless of what somebody has to say, regardless of what anybody thinks, don't let somebody else's thinking or speech define you. You be you. The leader inspires. The leader motivates. Many of you out there probably participate in athletics, if not drama or music or Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or Cub Scouts, on and on and on. There are leaders who inspire those individuals in each one of those activities to do more and go beyond what they would normally do. And that's the essence of true leadership, getting people to do things that they would not normally do on their own. Yeah. So, I ask you, take a look at Joey, Jack, and Jill. Joey, Jack, and Jill. Hmm. I wonder what that has to do with the symbol for caring. We'll soon see. How about Sook Sally and Jimmy? Now, you're from the Eastern Shore, or you live on the Eastern Shore. You should definitely know what a Sook is, what a Sally is, and what a Jimmy is. But then again, you might not. It's all part of the learning curve. Oh, and by the way, what do Bob Kayak Level 1001 and Race Car have in common? Because we're all driving toward a concept here. First and foremost, Joey, Jack, and Jill. If you are Australian, mate, if you are Australian, you know that a Joey is a baby kangaroo. A Jack is a male, also known as a buck. A Jill is a doe. Baby, male, female. A sook, female crab. A sally, immature female crab. Jimmy, a male. Mm -hmm. Bob, kayak, level 1001, race car. What on earth? The commonality, all these things are related. These five things are related. They're called palindromes. Here's the clue right here. First word, Bob, kayak, level, number, race car. They read the same, right to left, left to right. Hmm. Palindromes, kangaroos, wallabies, possums. What do we know about them? They are, and I love this word, it rolls off the tongue, marsupial. What do you know about the kangaroo? Well, the kangaroo has a very obvious pouch that it carries and nurtures its young in until they come to maturity. Hmm. Well, that's what marsupials do. About the only one we find here in North America is our good old possum. Well, possums walk on four, so it's hard to see the pouch on a possum. The pouch is a marsupial, I'm sorry, a possum is a marsupial as well. So is the koala bear. Pretty furry, cuddly little koala bear, also a marsupial. Uh-huh. Caring and a kangaroo. Marsupials care for their young, carry their young in pouches and nurture them until they reach maturity. So there's the link between the symbol as well as the pillar. All right. How do you see caring? Well, I was driving up Route 8 about two weeks ago. Saw about 20 young ladies out there. Big trash bags, gloves. By the end of the day, going up from Bat's Neck, headed up toward Mattapique, there were big, full bags of trash. Scouts. Community service. That's how you show you care. Had an opportunity to speak with a couple students this week, virtually. And one of the Girl Scout troops was making blankets. There was a family also making blankets. Blankets for the homeless. Yes. Another way to show that they care. Some of you that are in high school, 
you can give blood during a Red Cross blood drive. Another way to show that you care. Regardless of your age, gently worn clothing, shoes, going to one of the pantries. Do you know you can walk right in the front, as long as you have an appointment, walk right in the front door of the library, right on Kent Island, bingo. You can deliver food, clothing, right there for those who are not quite as fortunate as you. When you think about an attitude of gratitude, that's the way of giving back. And it, it doesn't matter whether you're elementary, middle, or high school, you can do those things. But the question is, do you choose to do those things? Or do you let somebody else do them? That's the essence of the question, because we do have something called free will. You can either choose to do, even though others don't, or won't, or can't, or you can just let somebody else run with the ball. It's the essence of leadership as well. In your own home, you think about this, little things, chores, chores. That's showing the people who are out there working day in and day out so that you can have a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food on the table, that you care. Pick up your room, make your bed, take the laundry down, fold the laundry, do the dishes. Unless the dishwasher's working. If not, clean the dishes and put them in the dishwasher. Little things mean a lot. It doesn't have to be something grand. But it has to, has to show that you care. Three words. I love you. I love you. Money doesn't buy those words. Money doesn't give you the sense of belonging of being needed and cared for, that those three words do. Don't be afraid or shy because you think, oh my gosh, guys don't, guys don't say I love you. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Don't be, don't be shy to say that to the people who are closest to you and mean the most to you in your lives. Yeah. Now, como quieres? Ser recordado. Como quieres ser recordado? Roll that R off the tongue. Got a question for you. Do you have any idea what it means? It means how do you want to be remembered? I'm going to ask you one more time. How do you want to be remembered? Are you the that's not my job person? Or are you the how can I help person? For instance, there's a young man, Mike Mitchell, in Michigan. Works at a Kroger store out there, kind of like Food Lion Safeway. His manager said, hey, Mike, can you please go out, get all the shopping carts, pull them together? You see that happening here all the time. Somebody's coming out, gathering up the shopping carts, either putting them in racks or taking them back over to the building. Well, that was his job. That's what he was asked to do, get the shopping carts. So where is Mike? Doing what he was asked to do. He sees an envelope. Now he's one of two type of, that's, I wasn't supposed to pick up trash, but he picks up the envelope. Notices that there's a name on it. Notices that there's cash in it. Well, you do have free choice, free will. What are you gonna do? He did the right thing. He took the envelope into his manager, $1,200 in the envelope, $1,200. Pretty good chunk of change. In fact, the store manager called the name that was on the envelope over the PA. A young couple approached. He verified their name. By golly, that was their rent money. That was their rent money. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. See this? Doesn't sound like there's anything in there. But don't judge a book by its cover. There's something in here that is of value. 
But here's the point I want to make. This is very heavy. You can tell just by the sound it's making on this table. It's very heavy. See this little guy here? Light as a feather. Light as a feather. Here's the leader. Here's this large group, not moving. It's kind of inertia. Now watch what happens. Huh. Very, very light object with a magnet. And all of a sudden, you're moving this very, very heavy object. Look what two magnets do. That's what inspiration and motivation do. True leaders can move mountains. And you get people to move out of a state of inertia into meaningful action. Now, I want you to do something for me, please. Going to take my little Volkswagen, going to gear down into first gear, slowing the old girl down, pop her in neutral, pull on the parking brake, and I would like you to please listen to this story. Mike Mitchell in Michigan, that actually happened. This is fiction, but I wonder how many times across this country and around this world this particular story has been played out. It's a universal story. It has happened time and time and time again. It is the essence of what caring for your fellow man is about. So please give it a listen. The Three Red Marbles. During the waning years of the Depression in a small southeastern Idaho community, I used to stop by Mr. Miller's roadside stand for farm fresh produce as the season made it available. Food and money were still extremely scarce and barter was used extensively. Barter was a form of trade. If you didn't have money, uh, I might have gone to the fruit stand and said, uh, Mr. Miller, I don't have any money today, but I bet you need a tape measure, don't you? He'd take the tape measure and I'd get the veggies. Yeah, that's barter. On one particular day, as Mr. Miller was bagging some early potatoes for me, I noticed a small boy, delicate of bone and feature, ragged but clean, hungrily appraising a basket of freshly picked green peas. I'm a pushover for cream peas and new potatoes. Pondering the peas, I couldn't help overhearing the conversation between Mr. Miller and the ragged boy next to me. Hello, Barry. How are you today? Oh, hello, Mr. Miller. Fine, thanks, but I'm just admiring them peas. They sure look good. Uh, I, 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 no, sir, I, I got nothing to pay for them with. Well, what have you got to trade me for, for some of those peas? All I got's my prize Aggie. Best tall around here. Is that right? Let me see it. If you ever played with marbles, Aggie is like an agate. It's a really beautiful, bright stone. Well, beautiful, bright marble. Here it is. She is a dandy. I can see that. Only thing is, this one is blue. I sort of go for red. Do you have a red one like this at home? Not exactly. I'll tell you what. Take this sack of peas home with you, and next trip this way, let me look at the red one. Sure will. Thanks a lot, Mr. Miller. And away the lad went with a sack of fresh green peas. Do you understand that that man allowed that young boy to maintain his pride, his dignity, his sense of worth? because he was able to give something that meant something to him that wasn't money in exchange for the food. Well, why is that important? Mr. Miller performed that same act time and time again for three boys in that community. 
and they would bring their marbles, but they never really had that beautiful, bright red marble. They got the best they had, but it wasn't quite the red marble. Well, time passed. Mr. Miller died. Those three young men who had gone their separate ways came home to pay their respects. They went to the funeral home that night. They went to Mrs. Miller and said, Mrs. Miller, I don't know if you remember the three of us, but you and your husband are the ones that allowed us as well as your families to eat. We've been forever grateful. We have something for you. Please take them and put them in the coffin with your husband. Each boy put into Mrs. Miller's hand a bright red marble. That was their way of coming back and saying, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for caring for us and for our families and helping us maintain our dignity, our self-respect. We are forever indebted to you. So, maybe you're going to be the one that takes those clothes up to one of the bins. Gosh, knows they're all over the place on the island. Or you're going to be the one that takes the food to the pantry. Or the one who gives blood when the Red Cross comes around for the blood drives. But whatever it is you do, that's the attitude of gratitude that those three young men gave to Mrs. Miller. How do you want to be remembered? And I'll close with that. Think about that. Look in the mirror every night because you can't run from that person in the mirror looking back at you. How do you want to be remembered? Only you can answer that question. Thank you so very much, everybody.